Secrets of Egyptian Mummification Revealed Preserving a dead body was a widespread practice, common to many societies of the past. Perhaps the most well-known rituals belong to the ancient Egyptians, who kept corpses intact through a process called mummification. In fact, the procedure was so successful that we still can view the mummified body of an Egyptian today, over 3,000 years after their death, and get a good picture of what they looked like. Why preserve the body? Ancient Egyptians loved life and believed in immortality. This motivated them to make early plans for their death. While this may seem contradictory, for Egyptians, it made perfect sense. They believed that life would continue after death and that they would still need their physical bodies. Thus, preserving bodies in as lifelike a way as possible was the goal of mummification, and essential to the continuation of life. The Egyptians believed that the mummified body housed one soul or spirit. If the body was destroyed, the spirit could be lost and not make its entrance into the afterlife. This is also why tomb preparation was a crucial ritual in Egyptian society. This process began long before a person's death, and involved the storage of items that one may need in the afterlife, such as furniture, clothing, food and valuables. Though the practice of mummification began in Egypt around 2600 BC, only pharaohs were initially entitled to the process. These attitudes slowly shifted around 2000 BC, when commoners were also granted access to the afterworld as long as their body was mummified, and their valuables were placed into the tomb. The full mummification process was mainly done to wealthy people, as poor people could not afford the process. The chief embalmer was a priest wearing a mask of Anubis. Anubis was the jackal-headed god of the dead. He was closely associated with mummification and embalming, hence priests wore a mask of Anubis. Beyond knowing the correct rituals and prayers to be performed at various stages, the priests also needed a detailed knowledge of human anatomy. Egyptian embalmers were so skilled that people mummified 4,000 years ago still have skin, hair and recognizable features such as scars and tattoos. The word mummy comes from the Arabic word, mummia, meaning bitumen or coal in every Egyptian, except the most abject criminal, was entitled to be embalmed and receive a decent burial. The body was taken to the embalmers by the relatives, who then chose the method and quality of mummification. The best and most expensive methods were used on the wealthy, but there were cheaper alternatives for the poor. The step-by-step -step process summary of how mummification took place. Insert a hook through a hole near the nose and pull out part of the brain. Make a cut on the left side of the body near the tummy. Remove all internal organs. Let the internal organs dry. Place the lungs, intestines, stomach and liver inside canopic jars. Place the heart back inside the body. Rinse inside a body with wine and spices. Cover the corpse with natron, salt for 70 days. After 40 days stuff the body with linen or sand to give it a more human shape. After the 70 days wrap the body from head to toe in bandages. Place in a sarcophagus, a type of box like a coffin. If the person had been a pharaoh, he would be placed inside a special burial chamber with lots of treasure. The mummified person's internal organs were dried out and stored in canopic jars. These jars were placed in a canopic chest in the burial chamber. There were four canopic jars, which represent the four sons of Horus. Horus was the ancient Egyptian god of the sky and the protector of the pharaoh. He was usually depicted as a falcon or a man with a falcon's head. The detailed steps of ancient Egyptian mummification. A messenger was told to inform the public of the death. Family made arrangements to mourn, for body preparation, and ceremony. This was important because Egyptians believed the soul left the body at death. For eternal life, the body and soul had to be united after burial. Embalming began in a special tent called, Ibu. The body was first cleansed with palm wine. Water from the Nile River was used to rinse the body. This step was done to purify the body. Egyptian embalmers removed the brain first. Because the function of the brain was not understood, it was considered garbage. A long hook was thrust into the nose and the brains were pulled out. The brain was placed in water to dissolve. Embalmers took out the internal organs through a left side cut in the stomach. The liver, stomach, intestines, and lungs were taken out and mummified. Each organ was stored in a small coffin called a canopic jar. Lotions, palm oil, and preserving fluids were used to wash the bodies and sides. The body was packed with straw and linen to keep the person's form. 
The tops of the jars represented the four sons of Horus. Happy watched over the lungs and had the head of a baboon. Duamutef looked after the stomach and was depicted with a jackal head. Kebisanuf protected the intestines and had the head of a falcon. Imset guarded the liver and was shown with a human head. The first step in this technique involved the removal and preservation of most of the internal organs. The lungs, stomach, liver and intestines were separately embalmed and placed into canopic jars. These jars were often decorated with one of the four animal-headed sons of the god Horus, with each son protecting a particular organ. Preservation of these organs was important as they allowed the dead person to breathe and eat in the afterlife. However, usually only the wealthy could afford to have their organs embalmed and stored in this way. After about 1000 BCE the practice changed. The internal organs were then generally wrapped and put back into the body or bound with it, or put in boxes rather than being placed in jars. Canopic jars were still placed in the person's tomb but they were solid or empty and served a symbolic purpose. The body was placed on a tilted slab and covered with natron salt. Natron absorbed water from the body which was collected in a bowl. Rotting of the body was prevented by removing moisture. For 40 days the body was laid outside to dry. The heart, representing the center of all knowledge and emotions, was usually left untouched inside the body while the brain was often thrown away. The body was then treated with natron, which acted as a drying agent, absorbing water from the body so as to prevent further decay. Natron is a naturally occurring white, crystalline mineral salt which absorbs water from its surroundings. It was mined from dry lake beds and used in the mummification process to soak up water from the body. After 40 days, the natron was removed from the skin and the body cavities were filled with linen, natron pouches, herbs, sawdust, sand or chopped straw. The skin and first few layers of linen bandages were then covered with a resinous coating. The rest of the body was then wrapped, often with the inclusion of amulets and with a mask placed overhead of the mummy. The whole process lasted about 70 days. Those that couldn't afford embalming generally had their bodies, preserved, through drying in hot desert sands or by covering them with resin. The chief embalmer, dressed as Anubis god of embalming, would bless the diseased and priest said prayers to help the dead person on his way into the next world. The eye of Horus was positioned over the abdomen slit and the body blessed. Hundreds of yards of linen were used, fingers and toes wrapped individually. Charms and papyrus were arranged inside the layers to protect the body. Priests wrote on the linen layers and recited ritual prayers. All wrappings were held together by a binding shroud. Mummia, or a type of glue, was finally applied to hold it all together. Cosmetics and artificial eyes were used on the mummy's face. A portrait mask covered the mummy's head. This allowed the dead person's soul to recognize its body. The body was finally placed in a decorated coffin. A coffin is the rectangular or anthropoid, human-shaped container that held the mummified body. The sarcophagus was the stone or wooden outer container which held the coffin or coffins. Friends and family walked through town crying on their way to the tomb. The more mourners the greater the dead's chance at entering the afterworld. Before being placed in the tomb, the opening of the mouth ceremony occurred. The family recited spells and the priest touched different parts of the mummy face. This ceremony allowed the mummy to eat, see, hear, and move in the afterlife. The Book of the Dead, Canopic Jars, and Belongings were placed in the burial chamber. The Book of the Dead contained 200 spells and instructions for reaching eternal life. Weighing of the heart, occurred after the tomb was sealed and witnessed by no one. The heart was the most powerful part of the person and center of the person's being. The heart was never removed from the body because it was used to judge one's life. Gods of the underworld judge the heart on how well one behaved in life. Goddess of Truth, Matt, weighed the heart against the feather of truth. Anubis, god of the underworld, made all final judgments. If the heart balanced the feather, eternal life was granted. If not, the soul was doomed and the heart was fed to the monster Amit. The Egyptologist Robert Breyer, known as Mr. Mummy, is the first person in 2000 years to mummify a human cadaver using the exact techniques of the ancient Egyptians. As senior research fellow in the Department of Philosophy at Long Island University, Breyer has conducted pioneering research in mummification practices and has investigated some of the world's most famous mummies. 
Egyptian mummification became a lost art around the 4th century AD, as Rome ruled over Egypt and Christianity was on the rise. But because Egyptians were masters at preserving the dead, mummies have provided us with a glimpse into the rich culture and traditions of this ancient civilization. But that's not to say corpse preservation is, well, dead. Mummification wasn't limited to Egypt, and, in some ways, the tradition also has transcended time. Modern-day people in Papua New Guinea still mummify the deceased. Beyond that, funeral homes in the West often embalm dead bodies to slow decomposition and allow time for ceremonies to take place. Even anatomical laboratories are known to use techniques that preserve bodies for medical purposes and education. For religious reasons, some animals were also mummified. The sacred bulls from the early dynasties had their own cemetery at Saqqara. Baboons, cats, birds, and crocodiles, which also had great religious significance, were sometimes mummified, especially in the later dynasties. Thank you very much for watching the video. Please like, share, and subscribe.